Ano ba ang purpose ng museum? Yan po ang gusto kong itanaw. The purpose of the museum is this. The traditional role of museum is to collect objects and materials of cultural, religious, and historical importance. Preserve, preserve them. Research them. Research into them and present them to the public for the purpose of education and enjoyment. Kaya pala kapag pupunta ka sa mga museum, marami kang makikita ng mga katotohanan sa isang bansa. Kagaya sa atin, meron tayong uh, museo, pambata, makikita niyo po dyan ang mga, yung mga lalagyan ng sorbetes, makikita niyo po dyan yung jeep, makikita niyo po dyan ang, ang mga ginamit nila Magellan, etc. etc. Ito po ay mga collection, at ito po ay mga materials, mga religious and historical materials. Ito po ay pinag-aaralan at nire-research at pinipresent to the public to the public for the purpose of education and enjoyment. Ang tunay naman ng palataya na katulad natin ay katulad din ng isang museum. We were collected by God. We were preserved by God and presented to the public for the purpose of His glory and His enjoyment. Aware ba tayo, brothers and sisters, na maraming nakamatang sa atin at tayo ay ipinaparada ng Diyos sa parada ng buhay at tayo ang nagbibigay ng enjoyment at glory sa ating Panginoon. Brothers and sisters, I want to remind everyone Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Remember, that this is our Bible verse for the year 2017. And uh, as long as you listen to me, I will repeat this verse over and over again. Because I believe na sa repetition ay lalong nasusok at lumalalim at na-immerse tayo sa ating pinag-uusapan. Parang chismis na kapag laging pinag-uusapan, lalong naiintindihan ng detalye. And that is the strategy that I am going to use for 2017. Ang um, Ephesians chapter 15 verse 10, ganito na kasulat, I already dissected the verse. I don't need to dissect it again for the, for the second time. But for the sake of repetition and immersion, allow me to read the verse. His intent was that now, through the church, see the Bible church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. I emphasize the word, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known, should be displayed by the church. To whom? To the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. I emphasize last time that brothers and sisters, there are other observers. Akala po natin na nakatingin lang po sa atin ay tao, neighbors and friends and brothers and the, and the sisters. But the Bible informed us that there are other observers. In fact, that is one, that is one of our job description. The Bible said that through that church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to whom? To the rulers and authorities. So habang ninalamnam na natin ito, it becomes more interesting to understand the nature of the church. Tayo po isang simbahan, hindi lang basta tayo religious, hindi, lang, hindi tayo pwedeng i-itsapwera. In fact, we are the only agency on the face of the earth that, were, that was mandated by God to transform cities and disciple more people and evangelize the Gentiles. Ito po yung verse na binasa natin na nire-remind ko sa inyo ay tamang-tama sa ating overall church vision na pinamagatan po natin taking the city, taking the nation and beyond. Nakita po natin, brothers and sisters, sa Matthew 12, chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, sabi niya, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we paraphrase that, and after 20 long years, we were able to come up with a, with a specific vision of City Bible Church that natawag natin, taking the city, taking the nation and beyond. Ang Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, na binasa natin kanina, ay direction natin, mga kapatid, 
4.27. Dito naman ang buo ang nasa likuran ko na tinatawag naman natin transforming the city of man into the city of God. So brothers and sisters, ay ito po ay pinaklarify natin, hindi po tayo maliligaw. Just join with us and pray for the vision and lagyan po natin ng flesh and blood ng ating vision at na magkaroon po tayo ng uh, masasabing nagawa for the kingdom of God for the year 2017. At uh, para po sa marami mga kapatid, maybe you're asking why, why, why did you use the word rerouting? Sa maraming taon ng City Bible Church, we concentrate so much on the maintenance ministry like uh, music ministry and prayer and children and, and all and all. But right now for the year 2017, we have a change of direction. We call it rerouting. We call it change of direction, change of course. At ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon ay on how to transform the, the city of man. We will focus on the offensive ministry of City Bible Church. At um, kung hindi po kayo, kung kayo po hindi po ma-absent sa ating simbahan, I, I already gave two important messages. Uh, two weeks ago, I, I emphasized the importance of Christian commitment. I told you, brothers and sisters, na hindi natin kaya mag-transform ng city of man into the city of God apart from commitment. If you're not committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot make it. We cannot make it. Next slide, please. Okay. And the other one, brothers and sisters, last week, last week I was able to share with you the word that thing is about personalizing God's intent in our church. Ipinakita ko sa inyo, mga kapatid, unless we were makarating tayo sa level na kaya natin i-personalize ang intention ng Lord sa atin, we cannot transform the city. And today, I'll be talking about displaying uh, God's life in our life. Pero before we go to that, I want to read our text for today. It is found in John chapter 10, verse 10. And this is what the Bible said. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I want you guys to see the word full. Puno. Kaya naglagyan ko ng baso. Ang baso dyan ay may tubig na punong-puno. At yan po mga kapatid, ang isa sa mga interesado yung topic na dapat natin i-consume today. Kung sa kayo ng umaga, ang mga, ang mga intake natin ay carbo at uh, siguro nag-water tayo and some of you, you ate uh, protein, yung egg. This time, please consume every, every, everything na pag-uusapan natin. Because, you know, brothers and sisters, napakabigat po ng mandate ni Lord sa ating church, kaya sana pakinggan niyo po. At huwag niyo mo nang isipin ang cellphone. Actually, we are, I'm helping you na magkaroon mo kayo ng, ng detachment sa inyong cellphone. Dahil ngayon, may mga tao masyado na pong na-attach. Nakita ko sa Facebook, may, meron na raw nagpakasal sa cellphone. And so, this is baloney. This is really crazy, brothers and sisters. Yeah, once in a while, drop it and uh, throw it and then show off that you are not the servant of the cell phone. The, ser the cell phone is your servant. Amen po? So brothers and sisters, napakagal na po ng aking binasa. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Ang magnanakaw ay naparito para magnakaw, pumatay at magwasa. I have come. Jesus is the one speaking here that they might have life. And the life here was elaborated when he said that and have it to the full. That's NIV. For the sake of understanding, I will I will I will cite the other version, yung King James, and ito ang nakasula sa King James, the thief comment, not but for but but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Ang magnanakaw ay naparito, hindi, ay, ay ang, ang magnanakaw ay naparito para magnakaw, pumatay at magwasa. I am come that they might have life. Look at the other, how, how King James elaborated that, and that they might have it more abundantly. Double adverb, more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, today, 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that the Lord will open your heart and that the Lord will open your eyes so that we will enjoy together our eternal riches through Christ. Gusto ko uwi ka ngayon, sabi mo hindi ka mahirap, hindi ka kawawa. Hindi ka, hindi ka, hindi ka, hindi ka, hindi ka palawi, hindi ka walang pinag-aralan. I want you, I want you brother, I want, I want everyone to, to measure your life based on what we have in Christ. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Gusto, gusto ko yung word na more abundantly. I like that. Ang sabi ng Lord, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Kung tinitignan niyo po ito, brothers and sisters, ang pinag-uusapan dito ay ibang klase ng buhay. Sabi ng Lord, naparito ako para magbigay ng buhay. Eh, buhay naman ako ah. So Jesus is speaking a different life. Nang sinabi niya, ako'y naparito sa inyo para magbigay ng buhay, sabi ng mga tao, buhay naman ako ah. I'm still kicking and alive, I'm still eating, and I'm still jumping. No, I, 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 I came to give you life. It's another life. Napakaganda po na pakaisipin po natin ito. Ay, naniliwala ko marami sa atin dahil sa mga problema, pagsubok. Wala na po tayo masyado parang para pag-isipan ng mga theological facts na ito, mga theological truth. But I think we need to, we need to, brothers and sisters. In fact, dito tayo talaga dapat mag-immerse at dito tayo dapat dumali. Because, you know, dami-dami natin problema. Alam mo, pag ikaw ay matibay, kapag hamang humahangin, the more, kang, the, more kang, the, the, the more na kumakapit ang inyong mga roots. Kaya, pag-usapan po natin itong bagay na ito. Alam mo, mga kapatid, kung tinignan po natin ang oldest manuscripts, wala daw yung word ng more. Ang salitang more is simply an insertion. One, one theologian said that abundant is enough. Abundantly, one adverb is enough. That's, 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 because when we say abundant, ayan na mga kapatid, parang baso na umaawas, overflowing. At kagaya ng isang Pauls, Maria Christina Pauls, grabe po ang tubig. Lalo na yung Niagara Falls, 150,000 per second gallons. So brothers and sisters, napakahalaga na maintindihan niyo po ito para uuwi po tayo today na we're confident. I need to display God's life in my life. This is the surest way, the surest route in transforming the city. Let, let me introduce to you my team for today and please be with me for the next 30 minutes. Next slide. Dalawang bagay ang ating makikita dito, mga kapatid. Displaying God's life in our life, that's my team for today. Ididisplay natin, parang museum. We're gonna display. But I tell you later, we have a little problem Kapag hindi natin naintindihan ang aking presentation because my concept is how can you display something, something that you don't have? How can you, how can you display eternal life if you have no life everlasting? How can you display Jesus if you don't have Jesus? But before that, before I, I, before I will explain the prerequisite ng pag-display, allow me first to discuss the two important truths in this particular verse. Dalawang bagay po ang gusto ko makita natin sa verse natin namin, namin binasa. Number one, Satan as the thief. Si Satanas bilang isang magnanakaw. Bilang isang magnanakaw. Hindi lang siya magnanakaw. Siya po ay naparito para magnakaw. At siya naparito para pumatay at para magwasa. What a vision. What a vision. That's his job. Satan came 
as a thief and he is going to, to, to steal and to kill and to destroy. Kaya maraming tao ngayon, wasak, wasak talaga, wasak na wasak. Damage ang kanyang buhay. Ang kanyang buhay ay devastated. Simply because of this person. Mga kapatid. Next. Jesus is the giver of life. So, dalawang bagay ang ating gusto makita dito sa John 10.10. 10. Dalawang personalities. Dalawang job descriptions. Dalawang magkaibang release. At dapat mga kapatid ay makita natin. An expression to all of us, especially to our guests for today. Sino I'm not asking kung sino gusto mong piliin. Because I know you are already mature. You already made a choice. The question is, sino ang pinili na natin? Sino ang pinili na natin? Bigyan ko lang po kayo ng another concept, I think. Can you please, uh, oh, I'll, give, uh, I'll, 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 I'll discuss first the clarifications. Number one, because this is basic. May mahalagang, mahalagang mapag-aralan natin sa yung mga term, semantics, mga kapatid. Importante na intindihan natin yung mga Bible term at makapagbigay tayo ng tanging interpretasyon. Number one, life in this context means eternal life. That's really, really important. Ang sabi dyan ni Jesus Christ, okay, sabi niya, the thief comes to steal and to kill to destroy, but I have come to give you life. What is that life? Let me tell you, and this is important, brothers and sisters, medyo mabigat na po ito because Pastor Jim is going to the, the meaning. I am interpreting right now before you and this is one of the honest, one of the heavy, heavy tasks of the pastor, giving interpretation. Dahil mahalaga po, mga kapatid, ang kalaman sa pag-interpret. Sino po sa inyo may sinabi pero someone interpreted it otherwise. Napakasakit po. Yung ba may sinasabi ka pero ibang interpretasyon ang kausap po sa sinasabi mo? Are you with me? Are you with me? Marami sa ating ganun ang bin, ba? May sinabi kang, oh patayin mo yan. Ang ibig mo palang sabihin eh, patayin na yung impis. Pero yung ganit sa'yo, bibigyan ng ibang interpretation. So brothers and sisters, listen up, because we are already giving interpretation, mga kapatid, because the logic is, sabi ni Jesus Christ, na parito ako sa inyong mga buhay para magbigay ng buhay. So logically, the life that He is saying is a different life. And in, in my interpretation, based on the Bible, ang buhay na yan ay buhay na walang hanggang. So, my, my elaboration is the life that Jesus is talking about is not the earthly life it is not your life here in the Philippines nor in the US it is not about your 70 years old life nor your 80 years old life nor your 90 years old life brother, the life that Jesus is talking about is the eternal life that God promised to the believers you know the meaning of eternal life? Ano ibig sabihin ng buhay na walang hanggan? And be elaborate. This is the life of God given to you. This is the life of Jesus given to you. My goodness. My goodness, brothers and sisters. I want you to appreciate that. I want you to appreciate that. Napakahalaga po ng bagay na ito. Ako pala sa aking katawan na ito. Kayo pala sa katawan niyo yan. Diyan pala ay nakatira ang buhay ng Diyos. Number two, brothers and sisters, is uh, number two clarification is life or is last eternal life has nothing to do with material things. Napakahalaga po ng concept ng ito, brothers and sisters. Or else, marami sa atin ng magkakaroon ng other measurement. Kaya I want to emphasize this because we are, you know, we are the takers of the city, we are the transformers of the city, we have the vision, at importante na dala-dala natin ang tamang concept dahil makamamaya isipin niyo meron akong eternal life, 
meron akong internal abundant life and it means dapat mayaman ako. That's why I emphasize that life slash internal life has nothing to do with material things. This is so important. Dahil alam ko nakikinig tayo sa radyo, sa TV, minsan nakakarinig kayo ng mga prosperity gospel that since your father is a rich God, you must be rich at the same time. Hindi po totoo yun. Dahil marami akong kilala sa Bible, mga, mga apostles na matay, na sila po ay mahihirap. At hindi po sila nagkaroon ng gold and silver and big treasure. Mga kapatid, I want to read a verse para 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 maitindihan niyo po ang sinasabi. But before we show that verse, gusto kong sabihin ang bagay nito. Listen up. Pwede kang maging mahirap na tao pero mayaman ka sa Panginoon. Is that clear? Amen. Pwede tayo maging mahirap na tao pero mayaman ka sa ating Panginoon. Is that clear? Mahalag ko po ito. Today, I am distorting principles. I know that uh, some of us, we have another framework. But to me, that's not important. The most important is what the Bible said. Marami akong kilala naging mahirap sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Pero napakayaman nila sa Panginoon. At marami rin akong nakita sa Bible na mayayaman physically and financially. Pero mahirap sila sa ating Panginoon. What is my point here? Kung may isang mayaman, praise the Lord. Pero isang mahirap, equal lang sila sa ating Panginoon. Amen po? Dahil ako naniniwala may mga tao talagang magubuhay na mahirap at makamatay na mahirap. We call it providence. Amen? May mga tao namang sa tiyan pa lang ng tanay niya, S26 na ang hiniinom. Amen po? Talaga yun ang kanyang direksyon. Yun ang providence. Yun ang judgment ng Panginoon sa kanya. At uh, alam mo tayo magagawa. That's the, that's the judgment of the Almighty and All-Powerful God. I'll give you the verse, brothers and sisters. And then, uh, ay gusto kong tikman natin. Alam niyo, pag nag-aya ka ng ilong, it is not enough to know how to speak it. You have to feel the word. And tignan niyo po mga kapatid. Sabi nito ni Apostle Paul, ito po yung kanyang mga kahirapan. That's the word. Ito yung kanyang mga kahirapan. Binabanggit niya yung endurance, troubles, hardships, distresses, beatings, imprisonments, riots, hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. Name it! Yun po yung buhay niya, Apostle Paul. Punta tayo sa sunod na slide. Meron po kayo papakita sa inyo, mga kapatid. Come on, bro. Next. Sabi nito sa may bandang baba, marami na siya sinabi, verse 9, no, yet regarded as a no, dying, and yet we live on. Halos mamamatay kami, pero nabubuhay. Beaten, and yet not killed. So no fool, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Have nothing, and yet possessing everything. Tell me to them, based on the Bible, ang tao bang ito, mga kapatid, ay kahawag ba? Dahil siya mahirap. Ang ganda niya, ang ganda, ang ganda, sabi niya, mahirap na nga po. I'm poor. I am poor, yet making many rich. Amen? Marami tayong, marami siyang pinapayaman. Sabi niya, Walang kaduman ako, and yet possessing everything. Mahirap siya financially, pero mayaman siya sa ating Panginoon. Wala bang palapak si Lord John? I want to say amen! Amen! Lahat ng mayaman kay Lord, magsabi ng amen! Amen! Nakasa natin, amen! Amen! Tell that to the person beside you, you are rich. Sabi mo sa kanya, you are poor. Ayun, ayos na. Nag-gets na natin. Gets na natin. Amen po? Lahat ng mayaman magsabi, Amen! Amen! Dahil sa ating Panginoon. Alam niyo mga kapatid, ang ganda-ganda ng internal life na ito. Ako po ay talagang, I really, really appreciate itong internal life na ito. Ang dami-dami talagang blessing. Ang tinawag nating word is manifold wisdom and I understand another word overlapping blessings Yun po mga kapatid Kaya nga, kung talaga tayo kay matalino susunod tayo kay Jesus Christ Amen po? If you want 
real prosperity, if you want joy and peace and love, we have to follow the Lord. Number three, life or eternal life is given in abundance. Ang ganda-ganda rin po nito, Alem, binigyan ka ni Lord ng eternal life. At ang sabi niya, ibinibigay ko ito sa inyo in abundance. At ang napakaganda po sa NIV, ang ginamit na word ay full and have it to the full. Puno, parang baso, na puno, umaawas. Pero sa King James, ang ginamit ay abundantly. Napakasarap pong isipin ito, mga ko. So, akala natin, tapos na yung pagbibigay niya sa atin ng God gave us eternal life, binigyan pa niya ng buhay na walang hanggan, akala natin tapos na. Ang sabi niya ay that they might have that they might have it more abundantly. So, sa mga yung ito, mga kapatid, ang akin pong gustong tahakin ay yung tanong na how do we display? How do we display the Uh, God's eternal life in our life. Number one, mga kapatid, is by rejecting Satan. We have to reject, we have to reject Satan, brothers and sisters. Maliwanag po yung sinasabi ng Bible, mga kapatid, very, very clear. At sana yun ang magmumotivate sa atin na parito siya para para tayo matayin, para tayo ay wasakin at nakawan. Maraming form yan. Ninanakaw ang ating joy, ninanakaw ang ating peace, ninanakaw ang ating, uh, ating uh, harmony sa church, sa pamilya, sa bahay. Ganun po ang kanyang nature. E, alam nyo you know, mga kapatid, kapag pinag-aralan natin ang, ang nature ni Satan, there are lots of verses in the Bible. Pero I want to give you one. At least one. That will capsulize everything about him. Tingnan niyo po mga kapatid ang isang verse na gusto kong introduce sa inyo. Because my motivation for you guys is to hate him. Na ito pala siya. Tingnan niyo po mga kapatid. Ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, you belong to your father. Ito yung mga nag-accuse kay Jesus Christ sa John chapter 8. At ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, you belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. So mga kapatid, dito pala makikita nyo, kapag ikaw pala ay connected kay Satan, you want to carry out the desire of Satan. The opposite is the same, mga kapatid. Kapag na kay Jesus Christ ka, you want to carry out the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So dito mga kapatid, ang sabi niya, dinescribe kung sino tong father na to, kung sino tong devil na to, he was a murderer from the beginning. At itinuturong siya ang siya yung nasa likod ng pagpatay ni Cain kay Abel. Not holding to the truth, hindi siya umahawak ng katotohanan. Sa, philosoph sa philosophical side, ang hawak niya ay puro kasi ng malingan. Dahil ayaw niya ng katotohanan. Ayaw niya ng katotohanan. Pag hinawakan niya ang katotohanan, binabaluktot niya yun, in-twist niya yun. Can you still remember ng panahon na na tinutukso niya si, si, si Adam at si Eve. Ang rahang ganda ng pasok niya, totoo ba na sinabi ng Diyos? Gusto niya magduda si Eva, si Adan sa sinabi ng Diyos. Sabi ng Diyos, don't eat the fruit of the tree. The moment you eat it, you will die. And Satan was so subtle, very good in twisting the words Brothers and sisters, ito, I, I, know, I know that the satanic forces right now ay hindi masaya sa pinag-uusapan natin ito. At hindi siya masaya sa ating ina-expose na po. Ayaw niya na ma-reveal siya dito. But this is the only way to transform the city, to transform the city of man into the city of God. Na dapat mabuksan tayong lahat. Marilis tayo, marilip tayo, magkaroon tayo ng freedom and liberty at maging instrument tayo ni Jesus Christ in transforming the city of man. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Wala daw katotohanan sa kanya. When he lies, he speaks his native language. 
He speaks his native language, native, inborn, embedded, natural. Mga kapatid, ngayon napakaraming sinungaling. Napakaraming sinungaling. It's a normal thing to speak lying. Speak a lie. It's normal in business, in, in accounting, in the church, in dealing with people, in relationships. Oh, talaga po, mga kapatid. Napakaraming ganyan. And he is the father of lies. So brothers and sisters, listen now. Paano tayo natin ma-display ang eternal life if we are not willing to reject the father of lies, if we are not willing to reject this God, this devil, this liar. Mga kapatid ka sa Panginoon, napakahalaga po nito. Brothers and sisters, for a in a short period of time, gusto ko ipakita sa inyo ang comparison between Jesus and Satan. Just to give you an idea, brothers and sisters, look at this. Bakit ang bago kagawa ko, hindi ako marunong ng pagagawa ng column. But I want you guys to see the point. Ano ang characteristics ni Jesus and ni Satan? Ano ang purpose ni Jesus? Lead people to salvation. Satan, Satan's purpose, lead people into rebellion. Ah, yan talaga yung kanyang, yan, yan talaga yung kanyang gusto. At ang kanyang dis, job description, yun yung kanyang gusto. Yan ang kanyang adhikain, brothers and sisters. Dagi tayong dalit sa pag-rebuilding. Pag-rebuilding ka sa papa mo, sa mama mo, sa pastor mo, sa gobyerno, sa pulis, buhay niya naman kasi yan. Yan, ganyan. Ganun ang ini-inject sa atin. And because we are calling all year, we're so ignorant of the word. Pag sabi mo, o nga, tama nga yung sinasabi niya. Kaya magre-rebelde ka na. I tell you, brothers and sisters, hindi porke mali ang pulis magre-rebelde ka pa sa kanya. Hindi ko rin nagugustuhan ng mga kristyano sa sabi ang mga pulis ang mga buhayan. Hindi naman siguro lahat. Are you with me? Hindi rin tama na sabihin natin buhayan sila. Kaya buhayan na talaga sila. Bakit pa rin sabihan? Because we, we should submit to the governing authority. Because, you know guys, lahat ng authority meron tayo sa balat ng lupa. Nino mo, lolo mo, lola mo, tita mo, pastor mo, mayor mo, barangay talod mo, asawa mo, kahit gaano pa kamali. In the sight of God's, under God's protocol, yan po ay hindi pwedeng balihin at wasapin. Silence sometimes is the best remedy. Are you with me? Pero kung, alam ba sa church setting, kapag sa church naman natin, hindi nyo na talaga si pastor, hindi nyo na gusto si pastor Jim, my suggestion is to go out silently. Amen? Tell me in front of my face, pastor, you know, mag-usap tayo, kami lang naman yan eh. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Baka matuturin ako sa iyong sinasabi, if I am a wise pastor, I will listen to you because I believe we have different facets of understanding. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Methods, tell the people the truth. Satan, tell people lies, motivation, love, and hate, at marami pang iba. Hindi ko na nilagay, wala na ako ng time, pero ito pa nakasulat sa akin. Ano yung mga karakteristics na? Yung followers experience, ang karanasan ng mga sunod kay Jesus Christ, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Ano na yung mga experiences sa mga sumusunod kay Satan? Sexual immorality. Alam niyo mo ang ibig ng immorality? Sexual immorality. Babae, babae, lalaki sa lalaki. Alam niyo, sa Amerika, may diyan pa silang group sex. Ay, nako, mga kapatid. Marami sa atin, gusto niyong padala ang ating anak sa Amerika. Ang mga nasa Amerika, gusto nang mungunta sa atin kasi medyo conservative tayo. Napakasama ng nangyayari sa ibang bansa, mga kapatid. Yan ay, because maybe dahil sila ay mayaman. Alam niyo naman, pag mayaman ka, marami kang time for pornography. Plus, ah, marami. Are you with me? May kinag-elaborate everything, brothers and sisters. Dahil baka papatawad tayo ito ng parusa. But please, 
Please lift that up and try to imagine what Pastor Jim is, is trying to say. Alam mo mga kapatid ko minsan, mas masarap yung mahirap ka ng konti. Kasi you will work and work and work. Pag sobrang yaman ka na, na halos wala ka nang ginagawa, that's the time na magpapahinga ka at magiging, ang isip mo ay magiging malayang mag-isip ng mga kabulas ng ganun. Amen? Tingnan niyo po yung mga matatanda na naging, naging pedophile. These are the people na wala nang ginagawa, irresponsable. Kaya, isa sa mga blessing ni Jesus Christ sa atin is really to work. You work! From, from Monday to Saturday, you work! Because this body is designed to really work! Are you with me? The body is designed to really work! Ang isa sa mga sumpa sa atin ng Diyos ay yung mawala ka ng trabaho. Because the moment na wala kang trabaho, that's the time na ang isip mo ay laging nasa Facebook, mga profile pic, at ubuhay ng ibang tao. You're not productive anymore. Palit ka ng palit ang profile pic mo because you're doing nothing. Alam mo, ang chismis ka ay ganito, ay ganito. Dahil natin ginagawa. But if you are working hard, Monday to Saturday, and on Sunday you go to CBC, Amen? That's balance, Amen po? That's life. That's great. Napakaganda po nito, mga kapatid. Number two, you prove to yourself that you choose Jesus over anyone and everything. Ang talong natin, paano natin mag-display si Jesus Christ? Number one, very simple, you reject Satan. You reject Satan in your life because you cannot display eternal life if you are not willing to reject Satan in your life. Number two is you prove to yourself that you choose Jesus over anyone and over everything. Kinakailangan piliin natin at patunayan natin na tinanggap talaga natin si Kristo na buong puso over anyone and over everything. I want to cite a verse, brothers and sisters, kasi napakahalaga po ng verse na ito. Tingnan niyo po sa tali, He was in the world, Though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. Nasa San Libutan daw si Jesus Christ, although ang San Libutan ay ginawa sa paumagitan niya, hindi siya kinilala ng ginawa niya. Verse 11, He came to that which was His own, pinuntahan niya yung sariling kanya, pero yung sariling kanya, hindi siya tinanggap. Pagdating sa 12, kaya nga sa lahat ng tumanggap sa kanya at naniwala sa kanyang pangalan, binigyan siya ng harapatan na tawagin ang anak ng Diyos. Alam niyo, marami sa atin, we emphasize on verse 12 alone, we forgot intentionally verses 10 to 11, which is the very foundation of verse 12. Kaya mahalaga po yun. Sa verse 10 and 11, maraming hindi tumanggap. Yung ginawa na hindi siya tinanggap. Kaya sa 12, pero yung tumanggap sa kanya, iba po sa akin na po yun. Level up na po. Kaya, mga kapatiran, para may pakita natin yung buhay na walang hanggan sa buhay natin, dalawa po yung dapat natin gawin. Una, we have to reject Satan. And number two, we have to accept, we have to prove to ourselves na talagang si Lord ay nasa buhay natin. Now, I'll give you my propositions. Number one, ano ang dapat natin gawin? Pastor Gio. Ano ang dapat natin gawin? Ngayong nakita na natin itong panag-uusapan natin ito. Number one, kinakailangan, mga kapatid, let's accept the source of eternal life and be ready to display Him in your life. Wow! So, gusto na natin, nakita natin, mahalaga pala yung to display. But the prerequisite is, we have to accept the source of eternal life. At least, sabi ko kanina, how can you display eternal life kung wala talaga si Jesus Christ sa'yo? Remember that Jesus is life. Hindi lang siya nagbibigay buhay, brothers and sisters. To me, that's under understatement. Okay, here's the right. Here's the true, here's the true statement. When you say Jesus is willing to give you life, to me, that is understatement. The true statement is this. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you have life. Why? Jesus is life. Amen? Amen. Jesus is not willing to give you life. You accept Him 
and that's it. You have the life because Jesus is life. Napakatindi po ng theology na yun, brothers and sisters. And many of us, hindi natin nare-realize na ganun pala yun. And maybe hindi natin, akala natin si Jesus Christ, alibaba ako si Jesus Christ, parang nagsishare lang ako sa iyo ng aking konting buhay. Ang ganda po ng paradigm, when you accepted me, you accepted life because Jesus Himself is the light and the life. So napakaganda po nito mga kapatid. Ano ang ating tinatarangin ngayon? To display God's eternal life. What is the thing that we need to do today? Accept the source. Accept the source. He is the source. He is life. At ngayon nasa sa atin na mga, mga kapatid, be ready to display that eternal life in your life. Napakahalat na po nito, brothers and sisters. Um, gusto, gusto ba natin, mga kapatid, na makamagnet ng tao? Sino po sa atin, mga kapatid, na gusto makamagnet ng tao sa kanyang buhay? Alam niyo, minsan, may mga tao na lumalayo sa atin. May mga tao na ayaw tayo makasama. May mga tao sabihin natin, ano ba yan? Parang, ano yung come to word dyan? Na parang inis o asar o parang kinjoy at tingin sa amin. Brothers and sisters, samahan niyo po ko sa hindi ko po ito talaga pinakita sa bio, dito sa slide ko because I want you to open your Bible turn your Bible with me in, in, in Matthew chapter 8 Matthew chapter 8 Matthew chapter 8 Please open your your old school the, 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 the Bible, the old school Bible Hindi ko yan nilagay sa slide para magbukas po tayo. Ang napakaganda po ng nakasulat dito, brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 8. Sa first one, mga kapatid, meron po siya segment titled The Man, the man with Lepros. Pinagaling po ito ni Jesus Christ. And sa verse 5, ay makikita nyo naman yung The Faith of the Centurion. Ito po ay pinagaling din ng ating Panginoon. At pagdating sa verse 14, ang segment title is Jesus Heals Many. Alam niyo mga kapatid, ito ang dahilan kung bakit maraming lumapit kay Lord. Maraming nang magbitize sa ating Panginoon. Because sa amal siya makarating, ay dinidisplay niya yung power of God, authority ng God, nagiging kagalingan siya, kagaanan, Nagiging blessing siya sa lahat ng kanyang pinupuntahan. What is my point here, brothers and sisters? Listen up. Since we accepted the source of life, at ang sistema is after you accepted the source of life, learn to display eternal life in your life. Sana po, saan man tayo makarating. Let us display kung ano ang ginawa ng Lord sa atin upang ang maraming mga tao ay mamagnet natin sa ating buhay and eventually madala natin sa ating Panginoon. Tignan niyo po sa dalit ang mga, ang mga Bible verse dito mga kapatid. Samahan niyo po sa verse 16, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed, demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all the sick. At, at dumalabas mga kapatid, napakaraming dinala sa kanya at napakaraming sumunod sa kanya. Ang point ko lang mga kapatid sa ating Panginoon, next week meron po tayong evangelistic Sunday and we're supposed to bring a soul, a friend, a neighbor sa ating simpan para makapakinig ng mga gospel presentation. Pero paano tayo makakapalakay kung ang mga tao na kapaikot sa atin ay banas sa atin, asal sa atin, galit sa atin, tisun sa atin. Sino sa atin mga kapatid yung pag dumarating ka, lumalayas ang mga tao? Sino naman sa atin yung pag dumating ka, they will love you, they will, they will say, ang gaan mong kasama, ang sarap mong kausap, 
You're, you're so true, you're so honest. Marami akong natutunan sa'yo. So brothers and sisters, we're back, we're, the word is, di ba we are, we will transform the city. And one way to transform the city, the city is, ipadala kayo ni Jesus Christ sa inyong mga bahay-bahay. At doon tayo mag-inaw. Since we accepted the Lord, be willing to display His power, His goodness and love and relate to people because eventually, sila yung mga dadali natin sa ating simbahan. Are you with me today? Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. Number two. Let this play spiritual abundance, not scarcity. Alam niyo mga kapatid, gusto gusto ko yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ na naparito ako para bigyan kayo ng buhay. And what kind of life is that? Life of abundance. Life of abundance. At sinasabi natin, this kind of abundance has nothing to do with money and gold and yen and euro and dollars and, and dinar. Kapag pinag-usapan ni Jesus Christ na binigyan ko kayo ng buhay na masagana, hindi po nangangahulugan niyan palagi ng material na bagay. My question is, Pastor Jim, what kind of abundance are you talking about? I'll give you a verse. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, tingnan niyo po ang mga kapatid. Ano na kasulat dito? But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Marami kang problema. Yes, marami kang problema. Name it. Marami kang problema. Pero kapatid, since na mayaman ka, saan? Mayaman ka sa bunga ng Espiritu. Wala problema. Wala problema, problema. Kasi mga kapatid, kung may mga sitwasyon na hindi lovable, eh mayaman ka sa love. Lahat malungkot na, lahat nag-aaway na, eh mayaman ka sa joy. Okay. Magulo na, may mga, may mga Sitwasyon. Ang hinihinangas ng kapitbahay ko. Okay. Pag-ising mo na umaga, ang dami dapat gawin. Pero nagpamadali, wala man di ka. Hindi ko bibili si kuya ang oras lagi na sa Facebook. Eh dahil mayaman ka sa patience, mayaman ka sa kindness, mayaman ka sa goodness, mayaman ka sa faithfulness and gentleness and all. Ano problema mo? Eh, pakailangan mo ng ganyang mga sitwasyon para nang gamit mo to. Are you with me? Amen. Hindi natin talaga naiintindihan kasi mga uh, kapatid. Totoo lang, minsan na, nakaka-dismaya na hindi po natin alam na kaya pala meron tayong ganito because definitely we're gonna face trials and struggles and persecutions and dahil mayroon kang internal life abundant life, mayaman ka sa mga bagay na to, at hindi ka na bumuhay sa scarcity, may mga tao kasing hirap na hirap sa love. Pur na pur sa joy. Bitin na bitin sa peace. Pobre pobre sa patience. Walang walang kindness. But brothers, I tell you, sabi ni Jesus Christ, I have come that you may have life and that life is abundant life. Alam niyo mga kapatid, sa totoo lang kumisan, mas marami pang love ang unbeliever, mas marami pang kindness ang unbeliever, mas kasensyoso pa yung unbeliever. O pag natatraming ka, huwag kang makipagigitan. Just, unless you are having LBM. I understand. Isang nas kristyano ko yung kochi na kalagay. I'm a Christian, yes. Pero yung driver, Billy? <laughs> really? Hello guys! How can we transform the city? Kung yung mga kapitbahay natin, asawa, anak natin, eh, nakikita, you live in scarcity. You don't live in in abundance, yung joy, ah, exhilarating, ecstasy, yung peace, maliwanag, klaro talaga, yung kindness, yung patience, yung goodness, yung self-control. Oh, anong isla rin ng self-control? 
self. Ano ibig sabihin ng self-control? Yung control niya. Ano di ba ang istorya ng self-control? Napakahila. Next. Hello. 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 Alam niyo mga kapatid, pag mayaman tayo dito, are definitely the people around you will see it and they will be blessed. And one day you will say, can I invite you to the church? Oh yes sir. I like what I I see in your life. Amen. Amen. Pero kung tayo ay kabaligtaran na, hey, joy, no joy. Peace, gulo. Patience, wala lahat yan. Masabihin ng tao sa iyo, sa narasin ba? Sa Church of Satan ba? <laughs> Kasi mukhang kabaligtaran na nakikita ko sa iyo. Church of Satan, yun. Number two, mga kapatid. Ano ba dapat natin i-display? Alam niyo, ang sabi natin, ang iniisip ko yung bouncing, yung ba... We want to transform the city. In order to transform the city, we need to bring the people in the church. But how can we bring the people in this? We need to display God's eternal life. And kinakailangan para may display natin ng God's eternal life, dapat mayaman tayo. Saan? Sa bunga ng Espiritu. Pag nakita nila yung ating yaman, are you with me? Pag nakita nila yung ating kayamanan, abundance, no effort, Laging andyan ang peace and joy and love and kindness and self-control. Ang mga tao magsasabi, ang sabali mo natambong? Saan ka ba sumisimba? Saan ka ba umakin? Can I possibly join your church? You must have a great church. Amen! Next. Display the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. That number one, number two, display the fruit of being connected to the Lord. Third, next four, four. Psalms, Psalms. Oh, hindi natin nakita yung Psalms. Ay yan mga kapatid. E kung gusto ko makita nyo, blessed is the man who walk, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the Lord the Lord. And though his soul humanity is the night, is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields his food in season and whose spirit does not wither whatever he does prospers. <sighs> Para may display natin ang abundance, hindi yung scarcity, mga kapatid. Kinakailangan lagi tayong connected kay Lord. Dapat lagi tayong connected sa water. Alam niyo naman ang halaman. Ang ginamit dito metaphor ay halaman. Halaman. Kapag pinagsapan ang halaman o puno, dapat lagi siyang may tubig o dapat malapit siya sa tubig. At kapag malapit siya sa tubig, growing. Nag Nagbe-bear siya ng fruit. So kung tayo po mga kapatid ay, if you want to display abundance, dapat closely connected tayo kay Jesus Christ which is our living water. At kapag nakikita nila na yung abundance natin, eh, ang sabi dyan, ano ba yung kinagawa mo ay pinagpapaka? Wow! Siguro napakadaling mag-invite ng tao sa simbahan natin pag ikaw nang nagsalita. Amen! Palagay ko, hindi ka nang matatanggihan. At posible na sa atin yung transforming the city of man. Because lahat ng tao na may bless sa'yo, nakikita ka sila ang yaman mo. Ang, ang yaman-yaman mo. Hindi material things, kundi yung, yung connection mo sa tubig. Yung connection mo kay Lord. Yung ano bang hinawakan mo. Pag meron kang ipinipipray, gumagaling. Pag meron kang mga sinisipunan, pinagpapala. Ito po ay mga, mga implications sa mga tao na nag interpret ng buhay natin, yan ang mga born again. Mula ang umatend yan, eto ang nangyari. Ang ganda ng nangyari. So yung nagpa-bounce, mga kapatid, dun sa purpose mo, to invite the person to the church and to the Lord, dahil di we display yung ating connection sa tubig at yan iba lang iba kundi ang ating pag Next verse is, ipakita rin natin yung power of God's Word in our life. 
As of the 2 Timothy 3.16, sabi nito mga kapatid, All scripture is God breed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be totally equipped for every good work. What is my point here, brothers and sisters? Kung tayo po'y nagbabasa ng Bible, at ang Bible ay nagagamit natin to correct us, to train us, to rebuke us, to teach us, especially sa journal, believe me, brothers and sisters, madi-display ang eternal life sa buhay natin. And eventually, ang mga tao na kapaikot natin, ang mababitize natin, and believe me, brothers and sisters, it's easy for you to invite the person to the Lord. You will be part of the transformers of the city. Pero kung nagbabasa tayo ng Bible, hindi naman tayo nababago ng Bible, sumasama pa nga tayo, do you think we can invite a single soul in our church? No, we cannot. We cannot make it. Sapagkat pwede mo siyang madala, pero yung nadala mo, mawawala din dahil sa'yo. Are you with me? 100% po yan, brothers and sisters. So, dito ay pinapakita ko lang sa inyo mga kapatid na, na kaya kailangan na ipakita natin ang ating abundance. We have to display abundance, not scarcity. In what aspects, mga kapatid? Number one, sa prutas ng Espiritu Santo. Dapat mayaman tayo dyan. Naniniwala ko ba kayo na maraming Kristiyano nakakaranas ng scarcity in this area? Pangalawa, mga kapatid, ipakita natin na tayo ay mayaman sa ating pagkakakunay kay Jesus Christ. Para tayong puno na nasa tabi ng tubig na nagbubunga. And the last one, mayaman tayo sa pagbabago through the words of God. The last, the last point that I would like to share with you is, this, is, is deposit. Deposit on your spiritual account constantly. Paano tayo makakapag-display ng eternal life? Ano nga ano, ano muna kong itinuro, mga kapatid? Number one is, accept the source. Number two, display spiritual abundance. And I, I told you how to, how to do it. Or how to share, how to show our, our abundance. Ab spiritual abundance pa ito. The last one, mga kapatid, in order for us to deposit in order for us to to uh, to uh, to display, we need to deposit. Makita ko po sa inyo ang idea, mga kapatid. Listen up. Look at me for a while. Pag nandideposit ko ka ng pera sa banko, deposit, 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 monthly, 100, 300, 500, 50, 20, bet. deposit ka ng deposit, mga kapatid. At the end of the month, pwede mong hingin yung bank statement and you can display it. Makikita mo yan and you can show it to your kids, to your wife, to your children. Ito na yung naipon ko. Bakit ka nakapag-display? Because you were able to deposit it money. What is my point here, brothers and sisters? How can you deposit the eternal life and the beauty of eternal life kung wala tayong dinideposit ko sa aking spiritual account? I'll give you the sequence, mga kapatid. Mga kapatid, listen up. This is really, really important for me. Alam niyo ba, every time you take the journal, every day, nag-journal ka, you are actually depositing spiritual gems. Every day, six, six, six times a week, I, to, I tell you, you are enriching yourself. You are making yourself so rich. Nagbabible study ka, nagpipray ka in one hour a day, I tell you, you are depositing good things, good traits. Are you with me? Are you with me? Napakahalaga po nito yung kinuntuno ko sa inyo, mga kapatid. Because I'm here, hindi po ako theologian. I'm, 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 what I'm telling you, mga kapatid, is to how to practice what we preach right now. Napakahalaga nito, mga kapatid. So, you got the principle? Kaya ako may may, may, may display sa iyo bank statement because I deposited money. So this is the prerequisite. So I need to deposit spiritual things para may may display ako sa inyo. So isa sa mga example ko, journaling. Amen? Ito pa, mga kapatid, listen up, catch this. Once na mag-journal ka, nakakita ka ng mga spiritual gems, apply 
quiet in your life, you already deposit it again, again and again. You deposit spiritual traits in your life. Ah, ano ang mangyayari sa atin? The result is joy. Everybody, everyone should say, joy. Pakita ko sa inyo ha, listen up. Look at me for a while. Nagdeposito ko ng pera. Sa isang buwan, 20, 30, ganyan po kasi ako mag-ipon. 100, 300, 500, basta pinatira. Situate na talagang nagdideposito ako. Pagdating ko lang ama, tinitignan ko yung, yung aking bank statement. May may i-display ako. Anong result? Joy. Are you with me? Are you with me? May joy ka. Okay, balik tali natin. Ang dinideposito mo galit sa manong loob, jealousy. Okay, nagdeposito ka. Pag natin mo na isang buwan, pakikita mo, ano yung display mo? E di galit din sa manong loob. Ano ang resulta? E di lungkot? Malungkot ka. That's why you look like, what? Bakit mo? Bakit ka? Kasi, I can explain that in, in, the, in, in theology. Because you deposited wrong, you will display wrong, and the result is even wrong. Wrong ka. Ah, tapa ba yung wrong? Sorry, Pastor Robert. Anyway, mga kapatid, I, I hope you, see, you, you, you were able to see my point. Listen up. Nagalit ka, galit. Sa mga nang loob, jealous everything. Nag-display. Wala ka ng joy. Tapos punta ka rito. Lord, mag-pray ka man. Pag-uwi mo naman ako. Bigyan mo ako ng joy. Stop it. I'll, I'll teach you the honest way. You start depositing good things in your heart. You start praying for the person. You start applying the word of God. You deposit a lot good things. And then without you knowing it, pagdating mo ng aman, ang, ang haba na ng kabutihan na ginagawa mo, masaya mo. At ang resulta ay malipayon. Amen. Amen. By default, you will win the war. Don't pray for joy. Joy is the result 